Hi there. Um, what I've got here are the normal little green smart pots and uh, I can explain those probably in detail a bit later. Um, what will they do is, is because there's so many of them, there's 20 odd, 25 I think, um, normally you'd have the fillers, a little filler sticking out here because there's a water reservoir in the base of them which fills to about here uh, which the soil is sitting on top of a, of a plastic plate with that's perforated and the tubes that go down into the uh, water. And it just we all I'm doing is using water and uh, every now and again I put a little bit of seaweed solution in here. Um, and these use capillary action to draw the water up to the roots of the plants. As you can see these peas here, you know, they're actually being fed from below out of that plate. And what we did to modify this is that, I'll get a shot of it shortly, um, we took the fillers off them and linked every one of them together off, off a tank here. So we had, we had a little bit of an issue trying to get the, the tank at the right height and the water level at the right height. So it, as, the, as everything drinks, that, that tank refills. Um, you see the peas are doing pretty good there. We started out with some corn. Oh, these were all propagated over the propagated. I didn't put seed in here, they were propagated in the propagating tables. Um, they've been in a couple of weeks now. And they're growing really well. I have grown corn on these before. The problem is when they're sitting this high off the ground, the corn's going to be way up here somewhere, so I'm going to have to get a ladder almost to uh, harvest it. So that's using capillary. You've got, you've got the first pot that's got the peas in the two, next two pots, I haven't sown anything yet for them. Um, so we've got a corn through here, and then down the end here, we've got a pumpkin over there. There's actually two pumpkins sown in that one. There's two pumpkins sown down this side. And you might just test see a little a couple of leaves that's a watermelon coming through um well there should be another one over the other side but i'm going to actually i've got some more watermelon i'll take you over there in a minute so more watermelon sowing to um put in as plants rather than as seed i'm finding that there's this you've got to sort of protect your seed if you don't protect your seed your germination rate can be very slow or um, almost non-existent sometimes. As we found here with the onions, we sowed the seed, and I'm going to I'm going to redo some of this stuff again. That one's got onions. This one's got carrots. And then I got two more that have got nothing in them, or three actually. Those cucumbers there that you're looking at right now were sown over in the propagation area. What it does, it just gives everything a better start in life you can propagate your seed. Now John's filming the um, potatoes. Yes you can grow potatoes on these. What you do is you just, as, as they come up, we just, like this has actually already come up a couple of inches already since we put the seed in. We'll bring the, the soil level with the top and the, these will just keep coming out and we take the soil from that container there and we just tip it in here and just keep bring it up as I say, once it gets to here it's a case to sit back and wait for the foliage to die off. Um, so yes you can grow potatoes, you can, in fact I've grown pretty much everything in these, the only reason I don't grow tomatoes out here is because in Queensland we get a problem with uh, fruit flies and uh, fruit flies have a field day with your tomatoes so we grow all our tomatoes inside the greenhouse in hydroponics. But these are the green smart pots which I endorsed several years ago, but modified. Almost lost my cameraman for a minute. Yeah, as, as if you have a look along the film here, that's where the, their conventional fillers used to be on the backs of these. And they've got a, a line, water line that goes right round and through the entire system, all fed from this tank here. 
And that was our problem initially when we set this up. I had to get the equilibrium right to get the, so that I could maintain this water level. So when the level goes down, there's a float in here which just controls how much water. So that drum can't fill above that point. And um, but I, the, these are amazing if you if you're just wanting to grow a few veggies. You know, you, you get yourself half a dozen of these pots. Um, and you can use them like you would a conventional garden. You, you, you do your rotational cropping. So what comes out of here, the peas, you look, find out what's a good crop to follow on from them. Because with the pea stalks, you turn them back in and they just add more nitrogen to the soil. So you could probably follow a leafy green in that quite safely. Um, the advantage with the corn, once it hits, um, once it gets to about, I mean, it's about five feet tall from the top of the pot, I'll put beans in below them because the, the corn stalks now become a bean, bean frame so that they'll climb up it. Peas don't do quite so well under, under the, because they need a lot more light, so they don't work quite so well under the um, corn. So what we did is we got these frames, same as what we did for the cucumbers, and uh, that's how that works. I think we've pretty much covered most of this part. I'll leave it there. And I'll go over the... Okay, I'm back. This time I'm over in the greenhouse. We'll keep the door closed. That keeps the uh, bugs out. Most of this stuff's prone to, stuff that's growing here is prone to being attacked by butterflies and whatever. Over there we've harvested a whole bunch of cabbages, they were sugar loaf cabbages, and they went really, really well. First time I've ever, ever drunk, time I've ever grown cabbages in hydroponics. This in here is, is, is a hydroponic setup rather than a, some of the pots you'll notice do have soil in it because you can grow hydroponically in soil. Because the, these again use the same principle, it's capillary action, there's water in here, and it, they're controlled by a valve in each pot. Carrots are doing reasonably well there, the carrots over there probably should have been, they were bunching carrots, I sh a cabbage, uh, onions, sorry. The carrots are down the end there. The carrots in here have done better than the ones outside. Over here we're getting our tomatoes coming on. Oh, almost missed it. I wanted to see what would happen if you grew, tried to grow a cucumber in hydroponics. So we'd pop one in here just to see what would happen. I want to make a comparison with taste and, and growth rate. Theoretically the growth rate should be quicker. Um, down here we've got tomatoes. Now I think my tomatoes might be a little bit on the slow side. Well, I can't be 100% sure, but because I've got to compromise the EC in, in this greenhouse because I've got things in here that don't require a lot of very high nutrient strength. Um, over here are some has-been beans and peas, which we've got a decent harvest off. Well, they'll be coming out in the next day or two. Then over here, now I thought these weren't, these are cauliflower. I thought these weren't hardening up. You have a look in here. You can actually see the, the heart starting to form. They've been a little bit slow and I'm not sure that whether it's weather or because I'm trying to pull this compromise on nutrient. I'm probably running my nutrient strength a little bit on the low side because I've got lettuces over here and some other things which we tried which we won't do in here again. Rocket doesn't do particularly well on here, it just goes to flower real quick. It could be, that could be a combination of nutrient strength and the temperature that we can get in here at times. The kale's doing reasonably well. Um, I want to come over here. This is our propagation table. In here I've got, that's just some mixed lettuces I only did this morning, so you can't see anything. There's, all you can see is the white cup with nothing in, it doesn't look like there's anything in, there's a seed in there I can guarantee you. And over the back, 
We've got freshly planted strawberries, watermelon. That one's watermelon. That one's cauliflower. And that one's peas to top up later. Plus, I've got some rocket in here. And you're quite amazing. This thing is actually. It's got a water chamber in it. I will, I've got another one of these arriving, and when we assemble it, I'll do a video so I can show you how it works. Underneath here, I've um, got a thermostatically controlled heat mat, and I keep an eye on the temperatures in here. And I, I'm leaving the vents open just so that the, it doesn't trap too much heat in there. Like that's up, that's like in a, in a rainforest in there at the moment, getting up around 30 odd degrees. Um, and what's driving this whole system this is where it gets a bit tricky having it compromising you got a bit of a cow manure down here from you know, sowing that this one down here we've got our A and our B nutrients and in here you've got water coming in just got to float in there to keep the water level right and that pump kicks on and on probably four or five times a day maybe more um, and this is where I, I'm not I actually love the system but really you need a pump for just about every kind of variety of um, crop you grow that way you can regulate that nutrient more accurately I'm sort of pulling a, an EC, which is probably be a little bit high for lettuces. Um, and possibly just under what I need for tomatoes. Different, different things. Tomatoes will grow as long as they've got water, just about. But you, really, you want a completely separate setup. For, you, ideally, you'd split the greenhouse in two and do all low nutrient one side and... Uh, high nutrient the other side and uh, that would um, pretty much cover a, 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 a system like this. I'm not saying rocket won't grow in here, it's just I'm still, I've never grown rocket before and it just all bolted on me and went to seed which is probably two things, nutrient strength is a little bit high for it or it's got a problem with temperature in here. So it can get pretty, it can get a bit warm during the day. But basically what we've got here is just a, like a big, it was, it's a green, well, they call them greenhouse, but this one's white. That, that mesh on the outside is small enough to stop a fruit fly coming in, which is a very, very small, tiny Italian fruit flies. And I don't like Italian fruit flies. The Italians can have their flies. But uh, yeah, it's a, um, all the walls and everything are lined in that, and then we've got plastic on the roof and, and artificial lighting which comes on in the evening. So if you have a look here, you can see the lights are running now. Um, that, when, when you've got things on top of other stuff, you need a bit of extra light to make them grow. So that's pretty much this part of the other than the silver beet down the very front there, which we've already harvested. I think some people call it spinach. But I'm a kiwi, and we tend to call it silver beet. It's good for chooks. If you don't know what a chook is, it's a ch chicken. If you feed them that stuff, what it does, it makes the yolk of the egg go extremely yellow, bright yellow, uh, uh, like a really bright orange which lifts the iron content of the egg. Then I've got these chilies here, which I'm waiting to see. I'm wondering if I missed this here. I'm just wondering whether I should have. Oh no, there's some forming. I wasn't sure about the pollination on in here because there's no bees can get in here where they needed to go and hand pollinate. But what I've got, you can probably hear it, is a fan up the far end there, or a couple of fans, which is just blowing air through, which hopefully is just blowing all the pollen around. The tomatoes and plants like that don't really need a bee. A bee's advantageous, but they will pollinate through the air. Sweet corn does the same. You could grow sweet corn in here, but uh, you don't want to grow sweet corn where you've got tomatoes. 
one will cancel, the other's pollination out because of the fact that they're air, air pollinating. Well, I think I've pretty much covered this here. Today we're going to show you how to assemble one of these smart pots. Basically it comes with the pot, the filler tube, some seals, and a nut that goes on the inside of the filler tube, and the tray. So to start off with, there's little tabs on this filler, and one of the washers has got the tabs in it and one doesn't. If you notice, it's got a bigger hole on one side than the other, so then it locates. You put that one on. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. And make sure you've got this closed, because if you see if we just put that in like that, you're not going to get that open. So you want to make sure that's closed when you insert it through. You just simply insert that through so it's in. Take your other washer, you put it on the inside so it's pushed hard up against there. And these can be a little difficult at times to screw on just to get started. That one actually went on quite well, so we just screw that up. Now that's kind of tight, I'll grab my poly grips just to give it a nip so then we've got a really nice tight seal so we're not going to leak any water out. Be sure not to over tighten it, just give it a nip till it's nice and tight. And that's basically how you assemble your smart pot. We've got that, that will open and close. We've got it so that it's not stuck behind. And we have our filler tray that holds the dirt and lets you have your water level underneath. As you can see it's perforated with water holes for the water to wick up through. On the outside there's three and if you look at the bottom there's six holes but they're basically just supports for the center of it so it doesn't bow and flex. And when you put your dirt in you want to pack your dirt down into these holes so that the water will, the dirt will come down to the bottom and draw the water up and cause a wicking action. And that just basically drops in the middle. And then from there, you can put it wherever you want and make sure it's level. And chuck your dirt in and fill your water up. We'll just go, these are the small pots that we've just done. If we go over to the large pot, which I've got here, they've actually, the large pots come with a propagation bag. The small pots don't seem to. So you basically just put that over the top and then you can grow from seed out of these large pots. And that's pretty much the installation on fitting all the tap fittings and everything like that.